so they call me. Good morning. If it's not morning where you're at, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. I'm your host, Anthony Longhair Leclerc, and I'm joined by my fabulous co-host, the marvelous Marla Mouse McCarty. What's up, everybody? And joining us today, we have the Finesser Professor. The Finesser. Yeah. The Professor. One and only. What's good? <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Today we're going to be running through your single Tango. Tango. Mm -hmm. yeah. And tell us a bit about that. So I dropped this about two months ago. So I guess it's fairly new. And it basically encompasses this whole vibe of um, independence. That you know you don't need anything or anyone to you know feel a certain way. That as long as you have the basics, necessities, which I proceed to state... In the song. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty clearly, I might yeah. add. Um, so as long as you got that and, you know, you're still hustling, doing your thing, then everything's all right, you know? You're going to be good. Mm -hmm. Sweet. That's pretty much the whole message. It's a fairly simple message, you know, didn't want to do anything complicated. Kept the hook fairly simple, easy to remember. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And there is thing, one thing I wanted to ask about it. So, um, just in the hook, it, so the, the person you've, you've written from the perspective character. of, yeah, yeah. Um, is... Is the goal just to, I'm just, I'm good? Like, that's the idea? Yeah, so, is... um, the idea is to tell it, is, is him telling a story of, um, you know, there's never, there's never any girl mentioned, Yeah. but that's the idea yeah. mm -hmm. of it, that he meets a girl at supposedly some club or something, and then they do the tango and dance, and then they're kicking it, and then, you know, something happens, they fight, she leaves, and he's basically like, yo, you know what, it don't matter, I'm still tapping ass, I'm still making money, I'm good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sweet. All right. Right on. Well, we'll... Let's do the tango, riding in the range, motherfuckers at your front door, looking for the gas tank, car out the window, seeing from a mile away, run nigga, run MJ with a fade away, fade a nigga any day, fade it out of fade a smoke tree on the runway, you don't wanna come play, you can call me Humphrey, man, I'm a hungry man, if I didn't know you would have robbed you, nothing that you can do, fall in the light, it's declining, I'm vibing, man, pull another split while you tripping, you always gotta be stuck in your feelings, I'm tired while you tripping, business a business, you get it, you don't get my intention, my intention is pure, I want nothing more from you. Since you left, I feel okay Ain't got shit to say Ever since you went away Bust through the gate I feel okay Okay I've been popping tags And I've been tapping ass Backpack, I'm still moving that Trap fast, I'm still selling yak I feel alright I've been the same Since you left, I feel okay Ain't got shit to say Ever since you went away
yeah. Well, I'm listening to the song. Of course, yeah. you're gonna get quiet. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking killer. I um, like that. Yeah, that's fucking. That is sweet. That is so good. And like, <laughs> and here's the thing. And I was telling Wild earlier. I was just like, I mean, I'm sure I mentioned this last time you were here. I don't really listen to rap much at all. Yeah, you and, did. You told me that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. yeah. But I, you know, I get, I get given rap to listen to from like you and from uh, and Moby One, right? Yeah. And it's just like, mm-hmm. all right, I have to like break this down and like appreciate what they're what it is about this yeah. right and so like while we we're listening to it we we're just like so what about that beginning right yeah, yeah. You're just instantly you're like i'm fucking instantly here like, yeah okay. that's okay. awesome it's okay. just like yeah. right off the bang yeah. it's like oh that beat though yeah. like it's yeah. so yeah. good and then when it drops it's just a whole nother vibe but one yeah, thing i yeah. like about it as opposed to a lot of the songs that i do lately it's like when i listen to tango i imagine myself just like Road Prison. tripping in the car. Yeah, you know? it's, it's not, funny. It's not like a mm. hype song that you dance yeah. or rap along yeah. to. It's kind of just you're chilling, taking mm. a shower, driving in the car. Yeah, you know. Yeah, doing... it, yeah. It's funny you say that too because I was thinking um, when I was listening to the song. So, like, because where our apartment is, it's like right downtown, and the, like there's a major roadway that goes yeah. past us, and like so I hear people blasting music like pretty much daily, and I'm like listening to this, I'm like this sounds like something that somebody would be blasting from yeah. their car, like <laughs> going yeah. down the street with like, the, this is, like, with something. the bass, it's crazy. Yeah, like with the bass, I'm like this car. sounds exactly like something I would hear like somebody blaring from yeah. their car. So, That's like, I yeah. thought something totally different while mm-hmm. I was listening to this song mm-hmm. because so. Lots of st- I should have had a fucking notebook. So I guess, I mean, and it, the one thing I always appreciate about, appreciate about your music is, and your your ability is, you can lightning quick through so much mm. with clarity, and you can understand what the fuck is being said, which is not always the case. Yeah. You, know, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like mumble rap exists. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I can always understand what you're saying, and I wish I'd written everything down so I could be like, ah, fuck, I had to talk about that and talk about this. Um, Mm-hmm. But, and I mean, the, the hook sort of spells it out anyway, but it seems the, the song is about this guy who, who is in a relationship yeah. and isn't anymore yeah. and is like, well, fuck it, you know, yeah. I'm doing all right, but that's because I'm going out, mm-hmm. I'm riding around, I'm, you know, I'm hooking still up tapping with, ass. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, hooking, I'm hooking up with as many exactly. people as I can, oh, I'm still oh, selling yeah. sort of... put this down. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And and you're doing what you can to to make it through, and that's how you're dealing with. Uh, this, I don't know if it's autobiographical. Yeah. But like, the thing is, um, so wait, you wait, I, wait. Before you admit that it's autobiographical, you do mention about selling. I just want to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to incriminate myself. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. 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 I just wanted to make sure. Um, but it's actually interesting you mentioned that because it was intended to be the story of some guy, not me yeah. in particular. Yeah. But mm-hmm. some fictional character. Yeah. yeah. And. Um, the song before Tango, so initially Tango was the second song in the mixtape, and mm-hmm. the first song was called Tripoli. So mm-hmm. um, if you're looking at the order of the tracks in the mixtape, before, this was before COVID, it was yeah. supposed to be, you know, first off I stop at Tripoli, which is a place in Italy, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and you know, I'm he meets some shorty, mm-hmm. you know, they yeah. hook up for a bit. Go, go first, like nights out, tango a bit, you know. Oh, and then, nice. okay. So that's where it's kind of like progression. So they meet a Tripoli, you know, yeah. they're tangoing, they're chilling, and then blah blah blah. But I thought know. you were going to make cool. a war reference when you said Tripoli because <laughs> like, it's like, man, no. where did that come from? But I mean, but yes, that, makes that concept um, is is just a concept, you know. I never actually made the mixtape, released it, so I don't think the new mix is going to follow that order. Cause yeah. I've evolved so much from when I made these songs. Like People don't realize, but I genuinely feel like with every verse that I write, I'm getting better. So you look at Tango mm-hmm. that I... So I had Tango on my phone, already recorded a mix for about two or three months before I actually dropped it. Yeah. Mm. So if you're looking at when I wrote Tango six months ago versus the songs I'm writing now for my mixtape, yeah. um, you may not notice the difference personally because you don't... You're not me. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. But I notice it, and I'm like, yeah. it's not that necessarily that um, you know people aren't gonna like it. It's just I always want to put out what I feel like is my best at the moment. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. why I also don't like waiting too long before releasing stuff because I write w- much better stuff, and I'm like, you know what? It's not worth it releasing this mm-hmm. anymore. See, I've I've got that very problem right now. Um, so when I was still living in Toronto, I wrote half of an album, and then came. Yeah. back here and wrote the other half essentially 
and I've still yet to fucking record the thing. And I play the song, well, I don't now, because I can't play gigs because of the fucking pandemic, but, um, but when we were still playing gigs, mm-hmm. I would play a lot of the songs, but some of them just need to sit on an album. They're not really like, oh yeah, come to the bar, get drunk and listen to this. Yeah, they're like, really not really, yeah. So it's definitely, yeah, definitely not Old Town Road. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Which I think I actually still have never heard. I, I just know of it, and I, I just... It's yeah. it's not it's nothing spectacular. But um, it gets stuck in your head. It's though. a black dude on Billy Ray Cyrus. That's yeah, what, <laughs> that's what sounds the most. <laughs> um, see, and that and what's hilarious about that is when you hear most people talk about it, it's Billy Ray Cyrus. Mm. Yeah, and it's just like oh, okay, of course you would just say yeah, it's just Billy Ray Cyrus. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and because you know he's like the country superstar. <laughs> um, <laughs> but. Uh, but yeah, so now I'm at this point of like, okay, well, I do really want to get all that out, but when I listen back to some of the songs, I'm like, you're like, like I don't know if I not, want them there. Yeah, you're like, it's not bad, but your sound yeah. has evolved so much that like, exactly. you don't, you don't want to, you don't want your image as an artist yeah. to be that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not like that image is bad, it's just different from what you yeah. actually are now. Yeah, so exactly. why, For sure. why portray what you're not now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's just logical to me and. You know, so many times I've said I'm gonna drop this mixtape. Um, I'm still gonna keep saying I'm gonna drop it. Yeah, yeah. I will. <laughs> That's right. I've been saying for you years know, I'm gonna yeah, drop that. It's album, just a matter so. of time, and I think it helps the anticipation because a lot of people are like, "Yo, okay, he's been saying he's gonna drop this for like four months now." Yeah. If he's waited four, five, six, seven, one year, it must be really fire. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So awesome. It's part marketing, but I'm not gonna lie and say I'm a marketing genius. I I just haven't finished it yeah it's just that that simple i mean that's fair yeah but Mm -hmm. so i went off but backtracking so you pictured someone blasting a song out of a car there oh yeah it's a total cruising team to me absolutely it would be one of those songs i just like listen to in a car just crank it yeah (laughs) but what i pictured because of the story that i heard was like i pictured a club scene and like, I guess it'd be more of a montage, and this guy is like going through all the things it's talking about mm. that's happening with him in the song. Music video ideas. Um, <laughs> and, you know, and like, you know, you see the lights like flash into the camera in the club, and as the lights flash out, then it takes you to a different scene or whatever else. But, you know, he's clearly hooking up with whoever. He's making deals over here. He's getting ripped yeah. over here. He's doing all, you know, like all mm. the shit he's doing to get out. And then I'm sure part of it would include him cruising down the road looking to do all this shit right? and so because what both of you um just said we actually had a tango music um photo shoot not a music video mm-hmm. but um part of the shoots that we did i'll see if i i'll show you guys after yeah but um it was actually that whole vibe of like nightclub you know when you envision a nightclub or like you know cruising to that kind of music what do you imagine yeah. you, know, you mm-hmm. imagine the psychedelic lights and yeah. The, yeah. the slow motion and the blurriness the and slow all that. grind with yeah. the, the arms in the yeah. air and all that kind and of stuff red and lights yeah. you know yeah. purple yeah. Um, and the shoot we had we um, we managed to get the sunset in a really nice time so we shot a couple things and, um, and the guy the guy idea. edited it and it was this like blue but not just blue it was like a trippy kind of blue um, sky with me with my hat, just a cigarette sticking out of my mouth. Pretty That's cool. sweet. Yeah. yeah. Solid. That mm-hmm. was really nice. Yeah, I definitely envision like in a music video having like definitely like some slow mo shots. Yeah, or, like it definitely um, lends itself to having like slow mo video. Like if you go to my um Spotify, my artist Spotify, the the image that I have there, I'm just gonna show it to you guys. Shout okay. it out right now yeah, okay. on the video. I'll show it right now. <laughs> no, I mean shout it out, like mm-hmm. say what's up. The Vanessa Professor. On Spotify, same name, Instagram, same name everywhere. Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, it's just the same mm-hmm. name. No one else is different as a professor. But yeah, <laughs> this, this image was from the Tango shoot. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's this whole, like, um, it really got inspiration from um, ASAP Rocky. Yeah. And, okay, you know, yeah. It's kind yeah. of aesthetic. Mm-hmm. So that's what we were going for. And yeah, it worked mm-hmm. out fine. So. Yeah. You and I'm just realizing you and Money Mo share uh, some fundamental inspiration yeah yeah i mean i mean generally i feel like a lot of rappers it all comes down to i feel like hip-hop is still so new or rap in general is still so new that like you can only draw your inspiration from so many people is what i'm trying yeah. to say yeah you know that's the saying? thing too. it's like rap over the past 20 years you could only draw your inspiration from <laughs> yeah. grandmaster flash or grandmaster flower or this person yeah. you know what i'm saying or biggie or tupac you know what i'm saying yeah. like there wasn't really that um large variety of different types of rap it's only 
nowadays that we're really seeing that. Yeah, and yeah. It's, you're hitting late 70s, early 80s, and you're getting into hip-hop and everything. Yeah, mm, yeah it's yeah. interesting to think about how it's a genre that's actually, like, pretty relatively new. It's all the newest considered. genre, like, I think it's the newest genre. Yeah. Because heavy metal has been around since time. You know, yeah, for around sure. Since heavy metal has been around mm-hmm. since Bach was around. If yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> like, rap, if time. you really think Country's about it. Country has been around since, like, the 1800s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But yeah. yeah, I mean, rap, if you really think about it, has only been around since, like, the early 80s. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, it, which is interesting. The, the prime of rap was the 90s, so we're talking, yeah. about, 30, we're talking about 30 years ago. Mm-hmm. And that, I think, is the perfect segue into the, uh, into Gonzo. Gonzo. Because, because when I listen to it, you'll hear it, but what, hopefully, yeah. as I did, yeah. when, so where, first of all, where'd you get the, the beat? So, um... A lot of you, hopefully, you may or may not know Most Def. He goes by the name Yasin Bey now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But back in the days, in the 90s, he was known as Most Def. Mm-hmm. And for me, he's one of the greatest producers. Um, he's a rapper too, but in terms of his production, beat making, per se. I feel like he's up there above Dr. Dre. And, and you know, my inspiration was... I'm a jazzy guy. I like jazz, right? Mm. And I, I heard the beat, and the first thing, I was just like... You know, when I hear a beat that I'm just... You know, if it makes me go like this right off the bat, I know yeah. that I'm going to be able to write something that's just mm-hmm. going to yeah. absolutely go crazy. And, you know, back to the whole paying homage thing, you know, lots of people look up to most Def, and I just thought this was his most iconic instrumental that he made because um, th- his original version of the song is just like, um, I'm just doing the best that I can. But what it is I have. So he just talks about, you know, being like a black man in the United States, you know, just trying to make ends meet with what he... So the message spoke to me. I just thought, you know, I'd flip that, put a modern flip on it, put a little the finesse or sauce. And, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that it was that it was a backing track from... Yeah, no, you yeah. should you should listen to the original one. And I think you'd like it. So do you know what year that came out then? Fuck me. Like, <laughs> in the 90s though, right? Yeah. Okay, because... Uh, actually, um, it might be... It might have been the early 20s. Early mm-hmm. 2000s. Um, yeah, I was like, early 20s, Jesus. No, no. <laughs> I thought we just said rap was new. <laughs> no, it's either, um, so Umi says, most deaf, 1999. Oh, okay. so, oh there you go. Because right there, the there was, when I was listening to it, and and listening to, to first of all, holy fuck, man. Because, like, I don't understand. They, just, they, they don't know about it yet. I'm no, dropping it. They, I have I have a guy making a video for it, so I'm going to put it on Instagram in a couple of days. So they'll see right, it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Probably at the same time. This so I was going to say, so I won't release the episode before that. Um, no, no, you but, can. You can. Okay. Um, but, I mean, it'll probably be two days before it's out, so it's... Mm. No. But, uh, but, yeah, man. If I, I don't understand how yeah. that shit just is like... Oh, yeah, and then from, head, from brain to yeah. mouth... Because I, I can think of lyrics, and I can think of words, but I can't think of rhyming shit off that yeah. fast. And that, like, I don't know, with coherently. Yeah. With a plausible fucking there's, there's, story. There's this, there's this part of the... So before you guys listen to it, I'm going to say that I wrote it in two intervals. I write almost everything I do in two intervals. For the, mostly for the reason that I mentioned. Because with every verse, I genuinely feel like I get better. Yeah. So if I write this now, I'll give it a couple weeks or a couple days to when I feel like I've progressed so that it only keeps getting more fire and fire towards the end. And you can see that in the in the middle of this Gonzo freestyle, um, the part that I go, uh, I can't swim, but I'm in sync. Hospitalized me because, bitch, I am too sick. From there to the end was the second interval. Yeah. And you can just realize that I come in with this crazy flow. Mackenzie, uh, you know Mackenzie? Yeah. I recorded this. He was like, yo, he, he just stopped everything. He took his headphones out. He was like, bro, this is the best take of anything I've ever recorded. That's uh, awesome. Of yeah. anything, rap, anything. And yeah. the, the rhyme schematics was like bouncing off the beat and the, the, the it was like, uh, yo, fuck you. I'm, yeah. I'm just excited to hear I'm that. just, <laughs> I, I'm too hyped. I get too hyped talking about it. I don't know. Like, <laughs> that's, that's what I said. You're only about the music. That. Man, you I'm like, excited. Yeah. I know a lot of people don't like it when you like talk yourself up, but you should be into I, your own music. I'm too oh, yeah. hyped. I, I'm telling you, I listen to that song at least three times a day. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you don't like listening to your own music. It's genuinely my favorite song. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, but if you don't like listening to your own music, mm-hmm. the fuck are you making it for? Yeah, it's hard. You know what I mean? Yeah, I told you. Sorry. Yeah. But, um... Don't worry, AC when we leave though. So no, it's yeah. all good. Um, but this this track totally reminded me of something that belonged on a Tony Hawk Pro Skater game because it made me think of that 90s 
yeah. hip hop skater it, era. It just makes yeah. you think of like, like hustle, you know? Yeah. yeah. Of that hustle. Cause yeah. I, so, so what I did was I took this jazzy beat that represented, you know, solidarity, it represented independence and freedom for the black mm-hmm. person. And I flipped that and I, I um, you know, added a modern touch to say that, you know, we're still hustling, you know, ain't nothing changed from the 90s till now. We're yeah. still black people trying to make ends meet. But the difference is now our means have changed yeah. because we're evolving, we're smarter, the whole world is getting smarter. So the methods that we're going to approach with ain't going to be, you know, we're not going to be standing in front of the park with cracking a palm, you know what I'm saying? There's new methods for that. There's internet, there's so many other ways. So yeah. I'm just trying to say, you know what, the hustle is still the same, the grind is still the same, but in the end of the day, the method we're approaching it with is completely different. And I feel like the song is a perfect embodiment of that because it's just so hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. Just, yeah. it's just, and I, I, I went hard intentionally. You know, I, I've gotten to the point that I can at will decide to make something more audially pleasing than others like I, yeah. I can actually do that intentionally now and mm-hmm. I'm glad that I can mm-hmm. develop this skill so I was like for this track I'm gonna go so hard I'm gonna take elements from <laughs> as many rappers as inspire me yeah. and I'm gonna put all the gradients together and just like boom and that's mm-hmm. that's what I think I did well I think we should just fucking listen to it now. yeah let's I, I, yeah. Hear this I now. talk too much let's listen yeah. to it I, <laughs> no you didn't talk I'm too much at all it's, it's fucking awesome <laughs> And I called it Gonzo because if you don't know what Gonzo means, Gonzo means just crazy, completely mentally deranged and just stupid crazy. And I feel like that's how I came on this beat. Like, I came stupid crazy on it. So, <laughs> Speaking of which, I love the way it fucking ends. Yeah. Hey, my man said only thing relevant. Wait, don't... Go- <laughs> oh, oh. I spoke too soon. Hey, let it play. Let it play. Let don't it spoil it. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Check it. Easy E, look, this the new hot head hat on. Can't wait for Armageddon like I money to niggas till I get them. Aggressive cause I'm dwelling. I got my umbrella open for niggas open to battle. Groping the rope is attached to my throat, need a medal. I stay sane, that's the nigga wanna play with the violence. Marginalizing, I write this in cursive. If she cheated, I'ma leave these curses. I'm feeling inspired, I'm pirating knowledge, it's not being moderated. Pick a later date, niggas never motivate me. I wanna manifest, show you're irrelevant. Chauffeur my enemies, approach with caution, I'm exhausted. Rhymes what I'm busting, you knew I was coming for you. In the back of that zoo. We was locked in that booth, now that's truth for the who? Who me see, who me do, I bought everything in the room Got me a bright eye, most definitely grooming I can't go to juvie, the lottery stupid Can't fit in the movement, can't fit in the pool with the crew I can't swim, but I'm in sync Hospitalize me, cause bitch, I am too sick I'ma need two seconds She hop on to this dick and bring two freaks with her for the boys, cause we too lit Let me set the record straight, I'm alien Confused, I'm amused, you're an Aryan Drive the McLaren in the area to flex You impressed with the flow, though? I leave you ice cold like Froyo or Frio in the winter time I'm so smart, I can read your mind You thinking how? This joker can be spitting when they're only in his teens Like green light, exploiting his ass, put a cap in your backbone That's an old rat zone, let me correct, that's an OG Only smoke woods on the loo You wanna sign me, I suggest you get the stepping I'm a lethal kind of weapon Industry obsessed with cross-dressing and drag queens And management wanna see me independent, so I became independent Screaming easy E for 2050 president They can never sever this, my mind stay only thing relevant I'm Gonzo Jeez Fuck, man Fuck That's my heart is beating faster. My heart beats faster every time I hear that song. Oh, I'm just, I'm just like, holy fuck! I really made that. That's yeah. sweet. It's like that's fucking awesome. It's cool. And now, oh, now that you gave that that bit of insight into yeah. the background of that track, it's just crazy. Yeah. When because you fucking referenced the artist from whom it came, and I'm just like, yeah, oh, yeah. I was like, got me a bride. I most definitely. Yeah. yeah, I was like, that's so sweet. And you say later on, that's like, this is awesome. all rap, but this is yeah. like, you know, and it's just yeah. like, yeah, you're saying all this same shit. Mm. From before, with this new perspective, exactly. but also the fact exactly. that this is an old beat that you get it, man. You get it yeah. exactly. And and I, there's, you know, part of yeah. I'm, I'm gonna let you talk for it because I have a lot of shit to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that that like jazz beat in the background. Like it really, like I agree with you. That really gives me that like. 90s like Scary rap yeah I, I saw you I saw yeah. you couldn't stop bumping your head I was, I was like, like oh. this is fucking <laughs> awesome yeah this that dope. was oh man that's sweet yeah so I was it gonna... just flows so well like it just flows so well mm-hmm. yeah so I was gonna say um, back to the whole taking all the gradients from all, uh, a lot of rappers that inspire me Jay Z dropped a song in his first album called Reasonable Doubt the song was called 22 Twos and he basically uh-huh. 
It was like um, too much West Coast dick licking and too many niggas on a mission doing your best Jay Z rendition. Too many rough motherfuckers, are, you know, just yeah. like that, just playing with the word too. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not gonna do a whole song like that. He already did that. You're you know not gonna what I'm do saying? 22. I'm, I'm not gonna do 22 twos. I did like five twos or six twos or something. Yeah. But the way I did it was like I did it like it was nothing. Yeah. I just like mm-hmm. I didn't put too much emphasis on trying to make people understand what I'm doing. Yeah. I was just like. You were like, hey, here's this homage. I was like, it's if they like, get it, they get it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And the people that get it, they're going to be like, yo. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I yeah. played this for one of my brothers. He was like, mm-hmm. um, I can't swim, but I'm in sync. Hospitalize me because, bitch, I am too sick. I'm going to need two seconds. She hop on to these dick and bring two freaks with her for the boys because we too lit. I'm just like, bro, holy yeah. crap. That's, that's one of the reasons why I think I enjoy listening to rap because I love the way that rap music can play on words. Exactly. I love that. I think it's... Great, and my brain can't do that. So it's just like I listen to this. I'm like, how the hell do you even like? Can I, I, can I actually skip back to a part that I that, that I want to? Yeah, yeah. yeah so. mm. Right here. Let me set the record straight. I'm alien, confused. I'm amused. You're an Aryan. Drive the McLaren in the area to flex you. Impressed. So it's like, let me set the let me set the record straight. I'm alien, confused. I'm amused. You're an Aryan. Drive the McLaren in the area to flex. But the way that I said it. With the lag and the way it was just bouncing off each other yeah. and the yeah. chimes that came in, it was just mm-hmm. fucking beautiful. That's I, awesome. That's so awesome. What I like I really just so is your love of your music. I, <laughs> no, no, no. I do. <laughs> I no music, and this man. is the thing. So I've 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 talked to my about this before because and this isn't to trash anyone that we've interviewed before. It's just like there's a thing I notice about a lot of musicians who are just like, check out this part. Isn't it so good? I did this thing right. But it's like, it's said in a way that feels kind of disingenuous. It's yeah. just kind of like, aren't I so fucking good? Yeah. Whereas you're like, dude, this fucking thing, like, it's so, mm, and you're jazzed about your own music as opposed to necessarily being jazzed of like, hey, you better feel the exact same fucking way I do because yeah. if you don't, like, what the fuck, you know? Mm-hmm. But you're just like, isn't, like, this is what I'm doing, this is what you're know, And that's a, passion, I think. Exactly. It's, passion it's not about making it, them yeah. feel the same way because they, they, I can't make it, like, if I'm making, if everyone's feeling the same thing towards the song that I dropped, then that ain't right, because not everyone yeah. thinks the same, and if everyone's thinking the same towards your shit, that means everyone's thinking it's either trash or, <laughs> you know, it's something else, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, I'm just like, it's crazy. Sometimes, like, I've had conversations with Mac, hour-long conversations, I was like, bro, I can't even explain how much I enjoy hip-hop and rap and the culture and everything, man, it's crazy. And I back to the reason why I'm so jazzed because I know how far I've come. You know, I've been yeah. writing since I was 11 years old. I know I didn't used to make shit like this before. Yeah. <laughs> so when I see progress, part of what helps me keep making that progression with every verse is acknowledging the progression first. Yeah. So I'm like, yo, you know what? I ha- I did have a rhyme schematics before. I was a good rapper, but I never done nothing like this before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause there's also levels to this shit. Certain beats are just easier to write on. It's just factual. Yeah. So. I, you're gonna be hearing, you know, new shit that comes in the future. Lots of experimentation, crazy, nice. lots mm-hmm. of crazy shit. You're gonna be like, whoever made this beat and this rap ain't human. That, <laughs> that's, I'm telling you now, that's that's just it, bro. And I know, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> and are, are you guys constructing those beats for the? Um, no. So I'm actually I'm um, working with this dude called Chu. I found him on YouTube. He's literally the best producer I know, ever. Mac is dope, but. He, Bro, he's a god. Like, this guy, and he's Nigerian, too. Not that that changes anything. It was just cool that he's Nigerian, too, and I'm Nigerian. Mm. But this guy is crazy. Like, he just gets it. He, he, gets, he gets that you have to innovate. Mm-hmm. And that's what I like. I like innovation. Mm-hmm. Ten years ago, no one thought um, XXX Tentacion or this kind of rap we have today would mm-hmm. be a thing. Yeah. It came from people innovating. So... I feel like me still being so young, you know, the five, ten years from now is when I'm going to be able to actually, um, you know, have the younger generation get influenced by what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. From so, your innovation. Yeah, from yeah. my innovation. So I just want to bring in, because I feel like now more than ever, people don't know it. Like, people don't say to themselves, like, oh, yo, I want a new sound. They're not saying that. But I feel like people do need a new sound. Because... Mm-hmm. Yeah. This whole new trap and mumble rap, you know, since like, what, 2015? It's been a thing, but it got so, like, cash-cowed that it, it, it's just like, 
okay, we've had enough of it. We get Need it. some change. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. It was just milked so much and just mm-hmm. boom, boom, boom. You know, the yeah. industry people are shady, man. Uh, something <laughs> like that. And uh, If it sells, it sells. Exactly. And they're going to keep selling it. Exactly. Yeah. And I think it also like comes back to what we were saying before, how rap is such a young genre, mm-hmm. too. So you almost have more room for experimentation because exactly. there are places where you can go that nobody insane, hasn't, like, insane. that nobody's done that before yeah, because world. it's such a new genre yeah. of music. So you have more room for that innovation whereas, like, with other genres, it's there's a lot that's been done before yes. whereas rap is so new. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's crazy, you know, like, mm-hmm. you look at Kanye, you look at Pharrell Williams, you look mm-hmm. at Dr. Dre, you know, you look at Jaden Smith. A lot of people mm-hmm. don't talk about him in this world but part of the reason that pushed me to be on the more innovative side is because of Jaden Smith. You know, he's been rapping mm-hmm. probably just as long as I have, maybe longer. You know, he dropped his first mixtape in 2012. It's called Cool Tape Volume 1. And the cool thing is that his new music video that he dropped called Cabin Fever, in the video, he like pans up to the sky and it says CTV3. Cool Tape Volume 3. And he already dropped the, he dropped Volume 2 in like 2014. Mm-hmm. So he's dropping the third yeah. one after two more albums. So I'm just mm-hmm. like, not many people are going to get that, you know. But I've been rocking yeah. with this guy for like fucking 10 years. Yeah. Also, so I'm hyped, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So people like that, man. They got You need innovative people like that to push the industry forward. Oh, right? yeah. yeah. And then, well, the interesting thing about him is because he's not that much older than you are. No. So, he's like 22. Yeah, I was going to mm-hmm. say, like, yeah. he's just about your age, is he yeah. not? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's like, so you're pulling... A couple years older. You're pulling even mm-hmm. just from that innovation as you're coming exactly. into here. Exactly. So you're talking about 10 years from now, whereas fucking hey, hey, two years it? from now, someone... Yeah. And, and, like, North Bay... I mean, hey, North Bay. I, but like, I know, it's I know not a big rap community, here. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not it's not huge in comparison to the number of people who play country. I know I wear the hat, but I actually play very little country. <laughs> um, but, uh... I just like the hat. I would have guessed you were like Bob Dylan's son or something. Oh. <laughs> hey, you know what? Jacob Dylan's actually a pretty solid musician. Oh, yeah. Uh, he certainly sings better than fucking Bob he Dylan. He sure does. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. But, uh... Times they are changing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like that, though. I like this style. Oh, no. I, I dig Dylan. I, I love yeah, Bob Dylan, yeah. That's, that's a legit concert yeah. poster from when I went to. Like, that's... <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh... But yeah, so like two years from now, someone here or someone fucking anywhere, because like you say, you have the internet now. Yeah. We have all these yeah. different methods of reaching out. So someone from fucking anywhere else in the world can hear your shit and be like, I mean, that. Yeah. Already, when I dropped Tango, I did this. Uh, um, no, not Tango. I, I joined a rap contest like three months ago and I won actually. Sweet. Congratulations. Nice. My yeah. first we ever rap contest. open. To talk first about ever that. rap contest I entered. It was called Voice for Bees. I won that contest. There were. Um, there was one uh, other guy who I felt like if I didn't win, he should have won. But yeah. he shouldn't have won because because <laughs> 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 <you won. laughs> I won. But I feel like if I didn't win and he didn't win, I would be pissed. Yeah. But anyways, um, I posted the freestyle that actually won me the contest. I promoted it because I was like, you know, lots of people will like it. And I actually got a lot of DMs from... Uh, you know, I asked their age. It was anywhere from about uh, 11 to 15 year old kids. Huh? And I was like, that's the perfect demographic that I want to reach to. I'm not trying to reach the people who are in their mid, mid, like mid 20s. You know what I'm saying? Already been through the shit. Already they're been through been the thing. shit and they already have. It's, it's not like I can't draw them as fans, but mm-hmm. they're not yeah. my um, primary. Cause think about it. Five years from now, they're going to be the ones who are um, leading the yeah. consumer market. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So if they fucking with you, and they become the ones leading the market, then you're going to be the one leading the yeah. market. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Yeah, yeah. So I think it's all about, like, now that I know the kind of people that listen. I mean, sure, my homies listen to my shit too, but in terms of people that I don't know at all, who is most likely to click on it and enjoy it? I feel like it's the younger kids, mm-hmm. which yeah. is always the case for the most part. In yeah, for sure. Any music, you know, it's always the younger kids. Because they want to hear something new. They want to hear exactly. something different. They, 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 don't, want want to, something they don't want to listen, want to, listen mm-hmm. to what their father is listening to, you know? And we're getting <laughs> to the point. We got fathers who were listening to Young Thug, you know? It's normal. Yeah. Young Thug is in his <laughs> mid-30s. He's a father. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. they're not trying to listen to what their fathers is listening to. So they want something new that, you know, they can feel their generational connection to it. Yeah. Just like, you know... Me, fuck. I mean, I, I like Lil Wayne and all these people, but, you know, they're still... Anyways. Yeah, and I feel like also at that age is, like, a time where you find a lot of key musicians that you really enjoy. Like, yeah. I know, like, between the ages of, like, yeah, like, 10 and 14 and whatever is when I discovered some of my favorite bands. For sure, for sure. So that's, like, definitely a good yeah. age where you're really exploring new music. 
I find at least. And the thing about um I'm always an advocate for allowing people to discover my music themselves because I feel like if I send you a link or I'm like, "Yo, check this out," or if I just played for you, it's like, sure, you may like it, but you're not going to feel a personal connection to it as if you just found it randomly on YouTube or Spotify and then you actually fucked with it. Think about it. Yeah. If I told you to listen to something and you liked it, it's like, oh, whatever. You may not even add it to your playlist. You just like yeah. it. But if you find it and you're like, oh, shit, this is fire. And you don't even know me at all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're going to have a much stronger connection to yeah. me and to my music mm-hmm. than my friend or yeah. that guy who I showed it to. You and they'll want saying? to discover yeah. and where that comes they'll from. Wanna keep, the they'll want to yeah, keep, exactly. uh, keep watch and seeing yeah. where it's going to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I feel like that's that's really it. Let people discover it for themselves. I mean, do promo, of course. I mean, you know, no one's just gonna. Otherwise, there's no market to leave. Yeah, <laughs> but I feel like yeah. the market that is there, I have no doubt that I can. Ta- See, my thing is not about um, being like um, the 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 best in the moment. Yeah. Um, trying to think of how I can say this obviously you want to be the best in the long term that's that's my goal but I say that because um especially now there's just so many new people coming into the market that I feel like it doesn't matter how good you are it's just depends on how easily like how easy of access you have to cash Mm -hmm. which ultimately means you can have more studio time, you can do bigger promos, you know, you can pay for a radio station. All of which I don't, I can't do, by the way. I got my song to 2,500 plays by literally, personally emailing and texting hundreds of playlist people. And I got, I got them into like 14 after texting like a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. So shout out to those playlists. Um, but yeah, it's not easy at all. And, you know, whilst I feel like... You know, if I if someone were to just today magically give me the opportunity to perform in front of a million people, I have no doubt that I'm going to be able to convert a million people to become my fans. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's not the issue. It's not about a confidence in myself or my skills. Mm-hmm. I know that I am going to be the greatest, period. And I wanted to test myself by joining the rap contest. And I was like, I mean, it's only one, you know, and it wasn't even that big, but. It's just something I needed to prove to myself. Yeah, yeah it's a good stepping stone. For yeah, sure. and you know, the first one I ever joined, and I didn't even think of it as anything. I was just like, yeah, whatever, I'm just sending a freestyle. And fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm and was that just local here? Or no, was it? It, was, no, it was... I don't even know where they're located, but they reposted me to this um, page called Verse. I think they have like over 600,000 followers or some shit. But I, I really fucked up that opportunity because... Um, I I wasn't ready at all. Like I said, I didn't even care too much about this contest until I saw that I was a final, <laughs> yeah. a finalist. Mm-hmm. Um, so I I didn't have anything ready for them to repost. I mean, honestly, yeah. they should have just reposted the freestyle, but they didn't want to. They were asking me for something else, so I had to do like a a shorter clip of like this, which is a song that I dropped before, and it didn't really bring much. Um, traffic my way because I mean the post was just it's not something that would attract people you know you have to yeah. make certain posts for specific reasons and I just didn't have it on time so I really fucked up that opportunity you mean think about it 600,000 plus followers I could have reached easily yeah I just sent them a shitty post but now you've got some great fucking tracks yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah <laughs> and so it's interesting because you were talking just earlier about how saturated the market is right now everyone's in it so and you're not worried about being top of the game there. Um, but if- I, I said I'm not worried about being the at the top because I know that when it comes, it comes. I know yeah. that one day I will. So it's not a matter of for how long I'll be at the top. It's just when it happens, then I'll decide for how long. Yeah. But like as I was saying, you know, the the, the whole point ever since I started writing was to be the best rapper. You know, if not the greatest of all time, because there's so many contenders for that. Yeah, and you know you got Jay Z, you got Biggie, you know I wouldn't say Pac is a legend, you know I, that's just my personal opinion. Really? <laughs> yeah, uh, I know uh, I study history of hip hop, and there's a lot of shady shit. That I, I'm not just yeah. talking out of my ass. But no, 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 no. The music industry is shady as fuck. Absolutely. It no, is. yeah. It is very sketchy, bro. And like I don't want to go every genre. I don't want to <laughs> go about this into. Yeah. But like, yeah, you know what I'm saying. So. Uh, 
what I want my legend to be cemented as is literally I want to go down the Finesse Professor, aka Easy E, the best rapper, the most skilled rapper, the most versatile and the most coherent rapper to ever walk the earth. That's it. Period. I don't care if um, you know everyone after me thinks I'm the greatest. It's a matter of the time that I am on earth and the yeah. time that I am actively doing my craft. I want there to be no possible contenders. It yeah. shouldn't be a question. You know what I'm saying? You know, now you got so many questions. Oh, J. Cole, Kendrick, this, this. I want it to be clear to the point that you can't even have a debate like Kendrick and J. Cole. I just want it to be period. It's just like, yeah. mm-hmm. it's like, oh, you don't fuck with Eze? What? You know? Yeah. I want it to be that kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we've got a long way to go. You know, I've just been evolving. I feel like when the time comes, it'll come. If it comes now, I'm definitely ready. You know, I feel like my skills have been honed enough. Yeah. But, you know... Well, that's the thing. Just and so, just backtracking again because you were mentioning the saturated market. I mean, it is just about the staying power, right? Yeah, it's yeah. Just like yeah. how long, how exactly. how long is everyone else going to last? Exactly. Versus how long you're willing to yeah. put up with a million other people that you're like, fuck, like everyone's yeah. doing the same. But you see, if there's a million other people in the market, but all the consumers don't think it's a close contest. That doesn't on, matter. on who is the best and it doesn't matter how many people there are yeah mm. it just doesn't you know what I'm saying if Jay-Z if Jay-Z drops a track today without any promo it's gonna go platinum yeah, oh, yeah. J. Cole drops an album it's gonna go platinum and he did he dropped Revenge of the Dreamers 3 zero fucking promo nothing and I mean nothing not a billboard not an Instagram post and it went like double platinum with some shit that's, that's crazy. crazy. See, see that, <laughs> that's the level I'm trying to get at. You yeah, know, yeah. Kanye drops something, promo or not, yeah. it's going platinum. Kendrick, oh, yeah. same thing. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's just that level. I feel like once you break into that elite niche, it's just mm-hmm. like, okay. It then becomes more um, what you do business-wise and what you do investment-wise to really cement yourself as a legend. You know, you look at Jay-Z, you look at Diddy, they're rich as fuck. It's not because of their rap, it's because of the investments and what it did, yeah. what it did to the community. So in terms of legendary status, that's what it takes, but... I'm talking just straight skill. I want no other rapper or no other person to be like, yo, you know what? I want to see both of them battle. No, it's not close. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, now I don't think that's the case, you know. I feel like there's a lot of talent and, you know, I keep uh, seeing sponsored, you know, the sponsored videos you see. So many yeah. talented rappers, so many, but I'm still like, you know what? I can take it. I could take them. <laughs> I still haven't seen anyone. I mean, besides, I mean, besides the legends. Actually, I'm not gonna. I'm not comparing myself to no legends. Now. I'm talking about just people like me, independent artists who don't have no labels. I'm talking about people like us. So I ha- I'm yet to see an ad where I'm like, okay, yo, this guy is. You nuts. got some worries. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But you know that just like I said, I haven't released my best song yet that I have. So yeah. someone else could be looking at me thinking the same thing, like, oh, based on this song, I can take him. But they haven't yeah. heard my shit. They haven't heard Gonzo. They haven't heard, <laughs> yeah, exactly. they ain't heard none of that yet. Yeah. So, like, it could just be that that song wasn't the best they could do. But I, I'm definitely holding back a lot. I'm just going to say that right now. Not, not like, I, intentionally holding back. Just because the, ty- the kind of songs that I want to make right now, it's more um, experimenting. Just all aspects of music, you know, mm-hmm. singing. Mm-hmm. Whatever, I'll play something for you guys after this whole thing is done. Mm -hmm. So right now it's just broadening my creativity and just music as a whole. Whether it's, you know, adding jazz elements to it or, you know, adding darker synths. Just pure innovation. Like, I don't even, I can't tell you now because it hasn't been innovated yet. But when I do, you hear it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's it's pretty excited. Looking forward to Mm -hmm. Once I get my fucking studio set up in my room, yeah. I can... Because right now, I, I go to Mac for everything, both to record and to mix. But if I can record on my own, I can just pay him 30 bucks and he mixes instead of like 80. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, that's a big difference. And I'll be able to drop way more shit too. Mm. Um, I actually, like, if I recorded every song that I feel like could make it into a mixtape right now, I have enough for a mixtape. But, you know... It's just a matter of... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely. As always, yeah. <laughs> Definitely, you know, yeah. put that money into the setup and then yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, Mac actually agreed to do my whole mixtape for me for five hundred bucks, which wow. is a good solid. deal. How many tracks? Nine. Uh, oh, that's real solid. Mm-hmm. Eight, eight actually. Yeah. yeah. But mm-hmm. I don't know if that deal still stands because the pandemic. No, not the pandemic at all. I'm just you know, 
by now I should have been done <laughs> recording the yeah. mixtape. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, like I said, it just, it's, I can't pull out money out of my ass. So <laughs> that's you know, fair. It's just taking time, but it is coming. You know, I'm dropping shit to fill up that space, so it's not like I'm just disappeared. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Another reason I wanted to do this podcast, I feel like I've been inactive for a while. I think my last freestyle was a, a month ago, almost two months ago now. So it's about yeah. time for a new one. Mm-hmm. So we should dig into that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're gonna reset Set the it. camera for that one. Yeah. That's gonna be a thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So uh, links in the description below. Make sure to check out the Finesse Professor. Yes. Um, do it. They call him. I don't know who they, they are. They call me. But, um, <laughs> actually, my business teacher in tenth grade called. I think I said that the last time I was here as to why oh, they yeah. call me that. I don't know. I don't recall. Uh, yeah, I think yeah, you, I think you mentioned it, but I'm trying to remember. Yeah. I just Anyways, know that that's what they call you. Tenth yeah. grade, my business teacher thought I'd never listened in class, and she'd always like tell me to do shit or ask me tricky questions, thinking I wouldn't know, and I just give her an answer. And she actually gave me a certificate at the end of the year. She gave everyone's like awards, and um, I don't remember exactly what it said on the certificate, but it was there was a description. It was pretty much related to yeah. finessing and. Mm-hmm. So you're like, well, what I want. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was just funny that she gave me that as a certificate. I was like, you know what? It's a certificate. It's real. There <laughs> you go. It, it's official. Awesome. So. And but it just sounds nice, you know, different as a professor. It does. I didn't want any of these Lils or you know, Lil Cam, mm. Lil yeah. as a uh, whatever. Mm. And there was already a guy called Easy E. And before I knew that, I, I actually guy. I used to call myself <laughs> Easy E. But I wouldn't spell it with a um, Z. I'd spell it with an S. Yeah. And I, when I was like 12, I found out there was a real easy E. So I was like, yeah, sure. I can still call myself easy E. It's just not going to be like my artist name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Unless you have uh, some pretty pissed off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pulling up the one their patent royalties and shit. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I don't want none of that. And I actually looked. There, there's only one other... F- Finesse professor, and it's not even the Finesse professor, it's just Finesse professor. Mm, well, there you go. And they were um, together, no separate in the words, so I was like, the Finesse, I had to snag that on Spotify before someone else did. I had yeah. to snag that everywhere. Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud, that's my name, the Finesse professor. You're not going to find no other. Is that other Finesse professor a rap artist? Yeah. Oh, okay. You better... I mean, it's not even close. It's not like, there's some people where you're like, okay, I better, you know, brand myself before they snag it, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah. You got someone who's literally making dookie, and I'm not worried, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> you found that on YouTube or on, SoundCloud. On SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Okay. You find the worst shit on SoundCloud. Oh, there's plenty. You find the best shit, but the worst shit. There's just yeah. so much shit in well, general. Yeah, it's on the saturated market. Right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's so you can make and music. Just nowadays, your Spotify phone. is, you know, I wouldn't say it's getting closer to that kind of saturation, but it's getting close to that kind of. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's getting more saturated. A lot, yeah. a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So. Um, man, this is solid. Uh, did you, yeah, I'll let you finish your drink. Ryan, the guy that came, he's also a rapper, the guy that does the film. And, um, you know, he he joined on the condition that he would also have his, um, you know, artist kind of management side handled by the label. But, I mean, he is the label too, so technically he's still handling it, but just mm. with more help from more yeah. people. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, and he's actually dropping a mixtape on August 28th. I don't know if that date is still real, because, man... He told me, like, he was dropping a mixtape August 28th. He told me he's trying to get, like, 500 to 1,000 plays per song or whatnot. And I'm like, bro, it's August 3rd, and you haven't sent me anything. <laughs> I'm not going to send air to playlist curators to post, you know. I got to send them something. You got to have everything. And until today, he has sent me nothing. So I'm like, bro, it doesn't take three weeks to get 1,000 plays on all your shit, man. Like, I did promo for probably, like, a month at least for Tango. And then a month after. So that's how I usually advise it should be done. That's how a lot of famous people do it. 
So, Brian, man, if you're watching this, I'll probably text you after. But Calling him out. <laughs> I have to, man. I'm plugging his mixtape and also calling yeah. him out. <laughs> that mixtape ain't going to drop if you're not, you know. I mean, obviously, he can still drop it. I'm not, like, yeah. you know, one of those mm. labels that forces him. <laughs> Imagine me trying to force like, no, you can't drop it. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can still fucking drop it if he wants. It's just it's not, it's not going to get the results that he wanted because it's literally impossible. It's too late. It's too late. It's August 3rd, bro. Get on it. Get on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get on it. Literally. He, <laughs> like, I told him to send me like a week ago. I thought he was going to send it to me the same day because it was already like a time crunch thing. Yeah. You know, but I guess not. But you've heard some of it, eh? No. I've heard nothing. Oh, okay. He hasn't sent me anything. But, I was, I, but like, you've heard of him before, right? No, yeah. He's on my team. He's on yeah. the Creeper Records okay. team. So, so, likely to be a solid mixtape, right? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I mean, like I if, didn't, if it comes out, I didn't do any production work on it at all. And um, we did one song, we did one collab called Outback that he was initially. Uh, he told me it was going on his mixtape, but then he told me like a week later that it wasn't going on his mixtape. So I really don't know at this point what's going on his mixtape or not. Um, I just know it's a mixtape. <laughs> it's coming out August 28th, I think. <laughs> Maybe. We'll Maybe. See. But yeah, really, you gotta clarify that shit, Ryan. I'm, 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 I'm out here trying to plug you, bro. But you know, I don't even know the name of the mixtape, bro. <laughs> I'll looks, make sure to send you the link to this so that he gets back to you yeah. right after you send it, him come the link on, to it, this. It looks bad on Creeper Records that I don't even know the name of the of your mixtape, bro. <laughs> <laughs> come on. <laughs>